All right, Super Bowl time, baby. Let's get the show on the road. A rebel took to the streets. He recruited others to join him. They roamed the hood and challenged authority. Community leaders feared them. Religious leaders abhorred them. We have to get them off the streets, they said. But they weren't part of a gang spreading hate and terror. They were spreading love. Can you not add religion to my fucking football? Thank you. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! So today is Super Bowl Sunday, the annual celebration of the traditions that help define the United States. Football and corporate greed. Don't get me wrong, you'll have a fun time watching to see if the Philadelphia Eagles or the Kansas City Chiefs take home the trophy this year, but I think we all know why you're watching the big game in the fucking first place. Don't get me wrong, a lot of the advertisements you'll watch during the game are genuinely entertaining. I myself have been entertained by Super Bowl ads of the past, so I kinda speak from experience on this. But there are two ads this year that are not promoting a major brand like Kit Kats, but rather Christianity and the teachings of Jesus Christ. I'm just glad they're not going as far as to sell my pillows. But this advertising campaign promotes Jesus Christ as an immigrant, a refugee, a radical, an activist for women's rights, and a bulwark against racial injustice and political corruption. And this all sounds good on paper, especially after we had to deal with the killing of George Floyd, as well as our former president, the Annoying Orange. In practice, it's an entirely different story when you consider that the campaign has ties to anti-abortion and anti-LGBTQIA laws, when their parent organization, the Servant Foundation Endowment Fund, donates tens of millions of dollars to the conservative Christian legal group Alliance Defending Freedom, while also accepting donations from anonymous contributors and David Green, the co-founder of Hobby Lobby, which was known for pushing the Supreme Court to allow companies to deny medical coverage for contraceptives based on religious beliefs. And while they claim to be unaffiliated with any church or denomination, they have close ties to evangelicals by recognizing and affirming the 1974 Lausanne Covenant, which ultimately sparked documents and decisions condemning and rejecting the idolatry of disordered sexuality. God's design in creation is that marriage is constituted by the committed, faithful relationship between one man and one woman, in which they become one flesh in a new social unity that is distinct from their birth families, and that sexual intercourse, as the expression of that one flesh, is to be enjoyed exclusively within the bond of marriage. Over a hundred million dollars was spent on that ad campaign, which honestly should have benefited the poor and needy instead of Joel Austin's next multi-million dollar megachurch. 